We're in Gothenburg and I'm at the Salming running headquarters. We're gonna do a full body analysis of my running technique for me to become a better runner and for me to run more injury free. So, tag along. Okay, Patrick, I've, I've changed my clothes now and mm. I'm ready to jump on the, on the treadmill and do this test. What kind of testing are we we're uh, planning to do here. This is a new unique uh, running uh, concept and running test we are going to do. We are going to put some markers on you and using those cameras in the ceiling to do measurement in 400 frames per second. And we can do an analysis on your body. Every segment, every part, we can see all of all kind of movements that you do when you're running. And uh, I'm not a pro runner or expert runner in any way, but uh, what I uh, figure is that anyone can uh, come in through that door and do this kind of testing in this uh, beautiful lab. Exactly. If you go to the website salmingrunning.com, you can read about the test and you can book and, and you can see the results and report and everything. And all runners can do this. It's going to be very interesting to see what kind of uh, test results we get out of it and uh, how I, I can improve my uh, own running. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, let's start. Okay, thanks. Okay, Patrick, mm -hmm. you've started to attach the stuff on my uh, shoes and my uh, legs now. What yeah. is this? This is a ref reflective passive markers and uh, I put them on a specific joint center to create a segment. If I have three markers on one segment, I can create and do correct biomechanical calculation to, to plot your velocity, angles, rotation, movements, everything. It's a little bit like creating a uh, video game out of me. Exactly. This is typically used in the animation and games industry the last 20 years. So, f for example, the Lord of the Rings using this technique. But we are going to do this today to analyze your running technique instead. So I put the markers, just bend your knee a little bit more and upwards. And you can raise. I'm looking for the knee joint center. And how many you put, uh, will, you, will you be attaching to me? Uh, I will attach 35 markers on you. And uh, that's the minimum number of markers to create a correct biomechanical model. Of course, we can use less, but in that case, we need to do trade off from some calculations. This marker setup are based on research projects and other stuff. So it's a research based system. So all the data are validated. So this is, this is correct calculation mm. of ev everything. And uh, so now we are attaching the microphone to my chest. And if you're a girl, you get to wear a sport bra. Sport bra, tie top. Yeah. That's okay. And this is just to get the right uh, currency in, the, in the, my movements on my upper exactly, body. Exactly, because if you put a marker on, on the shirt, you get very uh, big uh, skin artifact or the marker will move. Yeah. And that's the same with your... Uh, segments, it will start flickering and okay. it's not good data. Okay, okay, you can turn. So we are going to run the test very soon and uh, you will run for maximum 10 minutes. Just yeah. look at the leg and you can r raise up. Great. And you will run for 10 minutes. You will warm up uh, in 5 minutes. And after that we will increase the speed every minute up to your pace. We want to put you a little bit over the limit yeah. to see what's happening with your running technique when, you, when we increase the speed and see what's happening. Yeah, and that's the kind of essence of the test. It's not, it's not a lact, lactate threshold test. It's a, no. it's a full body analysis of how my body reacts on exactly. my running. Yeah, yeah, so it's pure running technique here. Yeah. Okay. So if you have any problems in mm. your running technique, we will see that in your arms, in the shoulders, the pelvis or knee and the foot. We can actually see it and after the analysis we give you some recommendation and that can be you need to train your strength or balance, whatever. And you will have some running technique advice as well. So yeah. it's different things here yeah. actually. Least but not last. <laughs> a um, what do you call it? Headband. Headband, yeah. Yeah. If we measure the head, we get the the, cent uh, the body mass as well. Because if you're running with your head in front, you will fall over a little yeah. bit comparing to 
yeah. running that way. So, okay. so this is a full body analysis. Yeah. And Peter here will, will uh, also check out my, my running? Yeah, he will uh, go around here and just uh, look at your running technique. Yeah. He will not uh, say anything and I will run the test for you. And afterwards you uh, take a shower and you will go to Peter and, and he will explain everything for you about your running technique and observation and re recommendations. Let's go. Four thirty. Four thirty. You will run for one minute fr from now. Okay, Patrick. Uh, I just stepped off the treadmill and uh, feeling ready to hit the showers. But first, mm -hmm. uh, you just want to talk a little bit about these numbers that we. I'm uh, going to talk with more with Peter about it. Exactly. Uh, I will just explain shortly what uh, regarding the results here, so you're understanding what, what we're actually looking at here. Yeah. We're we looking at me. Exactly. That's right? you running yeah. in uh, the 340 pace here yeah. in slow motion, and it's uh, possible to rotate and turn. And you can actually see all the movements from the thorax, the pelvis, uh, and the leg that you can't see with your eyes, actually. Yeah. So that's a very big benefit. Mm. So just looking at the, these the basic running parameters, yeah. you get uh, 420, 340, 320. Yeah. And you get the right and left leg. Yes. But we can skip the lower speed here. We can go for the 340 yeah. speed yeah. here. <coughs> you got the step length. You got a longer step length, one decimeter on your left. On my left. On your left. Yeah. And you have uh, the, the cadence is almost 175, yeah. and it should be 180, something like that, okay, yeah. when you're running. And you see the stance time here, that's the contact time. Yeah. And you can see there's a small difference because you have a longer contact time on your left foot, yeah. comparing to the right one. Okay. And you get longer step length on the longer left as well. Length means, yeah. So you have longer contact with the floor. Yes. And when you run, you don't want this contact time. You want to yeah, hit yeah. the floor and get it off yeah, yeah. and fly so much as possible. Yes. So all, all these numbers will then be cooked down into some kind of a context exactly. together with Peter. Exactly, yeah. Yes, perfect. Looking at this uh, next slide, what is this? This is the pelvis height when you're running. Because when you're running, you don't want this vertical movement. Yeah. You want to run forward, not mm. up and down. And you can, uh, you can see here on the different colors that when you increase the speed, you decrease the vertical movement. Yeah. The lowest speed you have nine centimeters, and the maximum speed is seven and a half centimeters. Yeah. So you have decreased one and a half centimeters just by running faster. Yeah. And it's very important that you decrease the vertical movement as much as possible. Okay, yeah. And one last slide uh, of all the data. We got plenty of slides. Yeah, of course. What, what is this now? This is the pelvis movement. If you look in three different rotations, you have a first obliquity, go from the left to the right yeah. with your pelvis. You got the tilt, yeah. if you lean forward or backwards, yeah. and you get the rot rotation okay. of the pelvis. Yeah. And uh, as you can see, you have this gray area here. And what's that? That's normative data from the Swedish running elites. So okay. you can actually compare yeah. you with a person who run 10K on 29. That's very foot. interesting. That's very interesting. And you can see, for example, here, you put down your left foot. Yeah. And what's happening with the pelvis, it goes up yeah. when you hit the ground. Yeah. And it's very typical. You hit the ground and you drop your hip. Yeah. You need more strength to keep yes. it up. If you look at the normative, the elite, they don't do that. Mm. But you do that. You do it on the left and the right side as well. Mm -hmm. 
And if you look at the tilt, for example, when we increase the speed, the green one, you start tilting very much forward yeah. comparing to the other speeds as well. Yeah. And that's natural because you decrease the vertical movement as well. Yeah. Hmm. When you decrease that, you need to increase something else in the movements. Yeah, yeah. And the rotation looks okay, a little bit stiff perhaps. Perhaps you need more. Yeah. I probably need a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Peter, now you have uh, been sitting down with my numbers. It's a 14 pages report about my running. Yeah. It's very interesting. Uh, and. Uh, You've been crunching it for a while, and uh, now you've come to uh, some conclusions about my running. And, and uh, what's that? First of all, uh, you need to stabilize your hip. And uh, it's very important to, to learn that because you need to have your, uh, all your power in your body in yeah. your running. And uh, yeah, that's the most important. That's the most. And, uh, also, I can see here on your notes that you, you mentioned something about my upper back. Yeah. That I'm, I'm a bit stiff. Your arm is a little bit stiff and your, your body is a little bit stiff up here. And you need to be a, a better movement yeah. here in your back. So you've been analyzing these, uh, what, 14, 15 pages of, of my data. Yeah. It's probably even more. Uh, and uh, you've come to some uh, conclusions and now we talk through them and then what will happen then after that? How can I use those uh, recommendations of yours and, and train wiser? Uh, I send you a report. Yes. After we are met here, I sit down and I write a training program and then I send you this report and you can, uh, it's a web report. Yeah. And I download and I uh, get home and uh, do some more training and, and probably or, or hopefully get better on this, uh, your recommendations uh, here. I hope so too. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any chance for me, you think, to become a 35 minute 10K runner? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm very happy with that. So uh, we'll leave you from the Salming headquarters here and uh, running lab and I uh, guess we'll talk to you soon.